from all around the world. This is your host, James Jordan. Mike Wallace. And the Eggman. Coming at you for another edition of the Wide World of Motorsports podcast on CFMH 107.3 Local FM in St. John, New Brunswick, CKMS 102.7 Radio Waterloo in the region of Waterloo and Ontario, and on the Performance Motorsports Network app, also streaming on all major streaming platforms. You can catch us on social media at the WWOMS, as well as our website, the Wide World of Motorsports Podcast dot WordPress dot com, and today we have a jam packed episode. We have NASCAR Pinty's Series driver Dexter Stacy, who will be racing in the Xfinity Series in Daytona, and we also have more later on in the show on F one and NASCAR Cup. Let's just get right into it here. You're sitting here with the driver of the number 92 Pinty's car, the Bullies Truck Stop Camaro. Uh, and all the way from Cuba is the man himself. How are you doing, Dexter? Oh, I'm doing good. Um, like I said, you guys are getting hit with snow, and I'm enjoying 81, 82 degree weather, so I can't <laughs> complain. Huh. Yeah, and, and we feel... Re- we, we our hearts are with you, of course. Yeah. Um, no, we, we were saying off fair that it's nice that you get a, a good off season and make it up to your family, right? So, because as a racer, you're gone a lot. We we all know that. I'm gone a lot, and they're stuck with me, so it's not like they get some some enjoyment out of it. But <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, um, I'd love to talk about uh, quickly with you. You know, go through the twenty two. Uh, season you we started at ctmp we've uh, not at ctmp sorry at sunset and we finished uh, at delaware um how do you think the season went for you guys did you accomplish what you wanted to no not really i mean we should have had a lot more top five or wins or podiums i should say um especially after the year we had before that uh, we did walk away with one this year which i won't complain about um just had some bad luck on our side mm-hmm. and like I said, it wasn't like we wanted, but we'll be all right. We'll regroup and go again. Yeah, I mean, I would say that seasons ebb and flow up and down, right? Uh, you know, you always want the, the you know, highlight season, highlight season. Um, but I would say that the highlight for you this year would be racing with your dad. Oh, that was like the biggest highlight of this year. I mean, he's been watching me go at it for how many years, and we decided to finally put him in one. And- I mean, who can complain that it's against their dead, so. Yeah, well, that's, and that's, that was cool to see, because you're right, I got a great picture of you and your dad together at um, at Delaware for the fall brawl. Um, your dad raced primarily on the dirt, right? Yes, that's exactly what came, came from dirt racing and running on the ice, so he never had no asphalt on experience at all. Really? And he ran, what, the 356, the big blocks? 358 and the big blocks, yep. Oh, oh, 358. Yeah, 358 and the big blocks. Actually, he's going to be racing in Volusia, too, if we get everything done in time. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I'll definitely be keeping an eye eye out on that because there's some big names down there, too. But, um, I mean, you need even more reason to watch. we got Canadian talent down there. Um, That's great. Was that something in, in... in the family, did it did it come before your dad, or or where did that dirt racing uh, my pass dad come from? Started it all off probably years before I was in a baby with the ice racing and stuff like that, and then he heard there was these dirt modifies and stuff and sportsmen around our area, so went watch it one night, and ever since then he's been hooked and bought a car and just kept going with it. And then I grew up around it, and well, I had my sister and brother. I was the only one that took part of it, and. After yeah. that, we just became that much of a bigger bond, and we just kept going. Wow, that's fantastic! Did your did your dad uh, build his own cars or buy them? Or uh, he bought big nail stuff, um, big nail chassis, and then he just put them together with all their parts and stuff like that. So. Right. Well, that's that's really that's really fantastic. Um, how did he How did he like it? How did he like racing on the asphalt? Uh, because it's different, actually. Every time they go, yeah. he says, oh, I like that, but 
we have to keep telling them like it's not a dirt car you ain't gonna have nothing left for the tires if you keep driving it like that so <laughs> <laughs> but, said, but it feels good and stuff and i said yeah well i said it doesn't work like that in this kind of stuff i said so you gotta get that that's out of you that's funny actually um, it's the I'd same love... conversation i had with glenn Styers too trying to tell him you gotta get that out we don't do that stuff in this <laughs> right right and that's right glenn's got obviously glenn comes off the dirt as well and onto the asphalt which is it's great to see that i mean uh, you know, I applauded Glenn for coming way out of his comfort zone and, and, and your dad as well. I mean, that's a huge, that that's put, that puts yourself out as a, yourself out there as a driver, right. Of, of being in something you haven't done before. I'd love to talk about CTMP a little bit, just cause you come from a, a dirt background, but you did karting at the very beginning. Was that road karting or was that oval karting? Uh, no, it was road. I did road karting. I ran all across Quebec and stuff like that, running go karts. Uh, oh man, that was like many moons ago, actually. Wow. So just, is that? And that's just in the off season, racing? I just bought a yeah. That's for the road. Some road racing. I mean, day and yeah. night different from carts to that, but it helps you big sure. time. But uh, in the off season, I just bought a, a go kart off Tagliani. Actually, I went go fool around in some races oh. with him and stuff. So yeah, that his course Ooh, looks look like that. it's a tough course. Oh man, I got back in it and I was actually huffing and puffing and I was like, damn, I don't remember it being this hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. So CTMP, like you've ha- you seem to have success there. Um what about maybe CTMP fits your driving style? Um, it could be. I mean my crew chief always yelling me, let off the gas on the oval if you drive it in too hard and stuff, so maybe I just drive it in further there and it helps me, I guess. I have no idea to be honest with you. No. That's <laughs> funny. I mean, uh, do you is it a track you look forward to or Oh, I love that place. I mean, like I said, yeah. there's I can't really say I have no fear because I really don't. I mean, I haven't had nothing steer me yet, so You've been I just, to a I guess, few I different know. road courses over your uh your years there you've been to Watkins uh Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal mm-hmm. so what is that up there for you yeah I'd say it's pretty close up there I'd say it's right up there I don't know it's just it's just one of the tough tracks that you got to be either good at or you're not so oh, okay totally. speaking of speaking of tracks just one and um curious about what uh what your your favorite race track down in the states was that you you raced at through your Ooh. your truck series, series the asphalt the asphalt really? bristol. yeah asphalt bristol a little yeah. bit of that wow. yeah okay yeah is there That's anything a... go ahead Drew. and that it is i'm guessing too wallace you were you were going along the lines of this question was that was that kind of a little bit of a throwback to you in some ways yeah I mean, if I could go back there tomorrow, I'd probably go back there in a heartbeat. Because, like I said, I always said if they went back, I'd go there and race again. I mean, they're, they're, they're nice and all that, but the asphalt was still a total different right. race right. to watch. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you started racing in the Xfinity Series, in, and I had it up, and I've just lost it at the moment. Two thousand. Yeah. 12 is when I started renting so my rides. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I rented okay. my rides from Go Green. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I used to, now it's called Go Fast, but uh, yes, yeah, it used to be right. called Go Green at the time. I rented a couple rides for them to get my approvals. And once I got all my approvals, I went to run my own team down there. So you, okay. you made your NASCAR debut on uh, May 23rd, 2009. At the what was then the NASCAR King Tire Series race at St. Eustache, you were just 16. I mean, at that yeah. point, the youngest driver in the series and um, youngest to uh, until the, the NASCAR lower the limit again in 2011, so it mm-hmm. went down to 15. Yep, I was the youngest for years, 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 years to go on and not in all yeah. series, so it was pretty cool. That's really cool. They used to bug me all the time about, uh, you don't even have a driver's license, but you can drive faster cars <laughs> than you could on the highway. <laughs> right. So you're kind of, I remember back in the day too, I remember there was a lot of conversation back then about, how it was getting, the, the age was getting lower and lower, and now we, we see it where it is. But I, in some ways you were one of the first waves of that. 
Yep. Yeah. It was like I said for a while. It was. I mean, oh man, I probably said to about 2011 is when they lowered it, and that was the year it actually got broke by somebody else. Right. Yeah. Well, how do you feel? How do you feel about the age limit coming down so much? You know, actually, you listen to some of um, some really some of the old timers talk about driving, and they talk about you know they didn't start till they were eighteen because you could have couldn't have sorry you needed to have a driver's license. Dorsey Schrader said that he didn't start racing SCCA till he was eighteen. So, do you is it a do you think it something that drivers should wait to just to have be have more experience um, not really i mean with all the simulators and all the go-karting and all the cars nowadays kind of you can pick up on it so fast that right. when you get in a race car you're basically ready to go yeah um, like me to get on a simulator it's not my it's not my forte at all i can't stand it i mean there's no realistic <laughs> to me so now you look no. at the young generation, all they talk about, hey, you have a vibration? Hey, you have a vibration? You're like, uh, well, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we hear that from some drivers um, that they they can't do the iRacing because it doesn't feel, there's just no feel, right? It's all visual. Um, we are iRacers and, and love it because we're not real race car drivers. So <laughs> <laughs> we, I we like to pretend. I, I give you guys credit. I watch you play that stuff and. I don't know. I get on there and do half a lap, and I'm already in the wall. Or like, so. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Well, we just did the – we just uh, competed in the iRacing 24 Hours of Daytona uh, two weeks ago. So That was tough. There were five of us. <laughs> it was tough. It was fun, though. It was our second 24-hour race. So. It's actually cool. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, it's in a, in a racing way. Again, it just – fun of racing right because we're not getting anything out of it we don't get paid to do it um Just we pay passion, to, yeah. to be sleep deprived and frustrated you know i mean i guess that's like racing um pay to be frustrated sometimes but it's just so much fun doing it you it's a camaraderie um i think people who don't know racing don't realize how much team sport it is Oh, it's grown over the years. It's crazy. I don't know. Uh, I... Yeah, uh, so COVID probably helped that a little bit. Nothing to do. Go racing online. <laughs> right. um, I'd love to talk to you about Daytona because it's such a uh, a unique track. Of course, it, we have nothing nothing in Canada that remotely remember, resembles that track. Um, you've raced on it previously. Uh, can you tell me a you know a bit about that and you know what that uh what that feels like i mean after all these years to be in a it's, a, it's a great feeling to finally get back there i mean i don't know if it's one track we should have jumped right into but when somebody calls and had the opportunity to do it you might as well get all over it no complaints so yeah totally plus yeah i want to go we should uh, we should say I go redemption after i was running fifth in 2013 and had a right wrist shear blow on me so I gotta go get that back. Yes. Right. So we should say that you are. You announced uh, uh, in January that you are running the beef. It's what's for dinner three hundred <laughs> at Daytona this year for MBM Motorsports. Yep, you got it right. That's fantastic. And the number sixty six is that for no, your dad? No, that is one of their cars that they use all year round, and just got lucky that actually I get to drive that one. That's a really cool coincidence. It's almost like it's meant to oh, be. Oh, he's in it going. Um, the he, number... he keeps bugging me about it. Yeah. He says, oh, man, you get to drive my car for once. My number. I said, hey, I don't get your hopes up there. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll get his luck. Um, uh, sponsored by Bully's Truck Stop. So that's been a longtime sponsor for you. Let's yeah, talk a, about them and give them some love. family-owned business that we had for the longest time at the gas station. So it's the ah, best thing okay. to put up on I... there. Ah, of course. I, I I feel bad that I was unaware. Like, I didn't realize that. No, it's all good. That. It's all good. How um, many people know that, actually? Um, tell, can you tell us a bit about it? Like, how long is that how your dad, um, you know, paid for racing? Like, how the family paid to go racing through the through the truck stop? And is it multiple truck stops? One truck gas no, station? No, it's just, just well, we have two gas stations, but our main one is the truck stop. It's, uh, it's in the Gunnawag and the Reserve. On the 132, um, my dad probably had that maybe 40 years, I'd say. 
35 years, 40 years, maybe. Wow. So That's it's so just cool. been a family business, been growing for a long time. So That's fantastic. Um, so it's great to have th that on the car. I mean, how could you not put that on the car down there for sure? What, um, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenges for, for maybe you with getting reacquainted with maybe the, the Xfinity car? I would say that they probably haven't changed that much since 2016, maybe the body. Uh, no, the bodies are not much different. I mean, they it, just switched to that, uh, that fiberglass body, not a fiberglass. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, basically a fiberglass body. Oh, okay, okay. So, so that's going to be a little different for me. Right, um, but everything else is going to be di a little bit, um, probably a bit of, a little bit similar. Tires would be different, but I don't know because I'm not a race driver. I've I don't heard, know how that feels. I've heard from oh, other you can feel these drivers the similar, from, the most similar cars like, in Xfinity. Yeah, I don't, but again, similar driver depends how long they've been out of it, right? It's been, I've been out of it almost uh, 10 years. So. Right, yeah, yeah. Wow. So like with these new bodies, I don't know how it's going to be in the draft. If you're going to suck up as fast, is it going to make it more loose? I'm not even sure, to be honest with you. Wow. Is there any, um, is there any uh, pre uh, testing or have you done anything to get ready for, for it? No, nothing yet. I mean, the <laughs> testing will be the day of practice when we get down there. So. Right. That's awesome. Does that make you nervous or does that make you, is that what makes it exciting? That's what makes it exciting. Just get in and go. I've done that my whole life with a lot of cars, so I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, do you do you see you guys uh, having a really good chance to get up to the to the front there and challenge for a win? Is uh, that... Well, this car finished second last year with Timmy Hill, so I think we got a good shot at it. I rented a uh, Hendrix Motor Two on top of it. So. Wow! Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Okay. So let's, um, I mean, we're definitely, we're, we were pretty pumped to hear about that yeah. here at the WAMS. Um, we're really pumped for you oh, yeah. and that, um, and that will, I'm, I'm going to assume is going to springboard, uh, your 2023 racing season and for the Pinties series, right? I'm hoping you're back for the whole schedule. Yeah. Me and my daughter back full time this year with, uh, EHR oh, again. Awesome. awesome. That's great. Uh, obviously running the, the Bullies Truck Stop on both of them. Bullies Truck Stop and the K-Fiber, our new internet company that we just started up as well. Oh, that's fantastic. That's that's great. Uh, what are your... What do you... Th what are reasonable expectations for, for you and the team uh, this year? Uh, like I said, I just want to go for more podiums. I mean, even if it's not a win, I'd still love to win, but I'll take as many podiums as possible. Yeah, I mean it, 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 it. James and I talk about it a lot, actually. Of of the the how the competition is in the Pinty series. It's so strong. It's so hard to win a race, um, and it's so hard to get up. You know, you look at the top ten, the top fifteen. You know, sometimes anybody could sneak their way into a win or top five. So it's really competitive. Uh, is the is the driving getting uh do you do you see that skill level coming up or the driver talent coming up in the field as well the driver talent just got amazing i mean when you look from first to last it's not even seconds anymore it's tenths mm -hmm. where it used to be it used to be seconds now it's not even close to that like you said anybody has a chance at winning one mistake and that guy in second or third is right there to steal it so that's right. I mean, you could see it at like places like Delaware, um, for sure, and other tracks. What um, what are what are your dad's expectations? I'd love to hear um, what he's thinking. Uh, he's actually ready to go this year because after he got his one his first year under his belt, now he's ready to go and get up on the wheel a little more and try and get more spots out of it. So. Awesome. What, uh, upcoming 2023 season, uh, Dexter. What what races are you looking most forward to? Now we got an extra. We, it's just an extra race at the Big O, and that's that could be a big deal. I don't know. My last year at the Big O wasn't too good. Um, 
That was my fault. I set it up as a dirt car. And, I mean, thinking if that's where I came from, I would have been better than that. But mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna change the setup on that this year, and we'll be right up there again. Can we talk about that track a little bit and um, yeah, go ahead. what things maybe because it was it was really good. It was really fun. We I loved the race. I think everyone would agree. What things from a dirt guy's a uh, dirt driver's perspective could they do to improve the racing to the track maybe for for the cars next year the tires the tires they have are so damn stiff that you can't even right, get traction yeah. no matter what you try i mean okay. they're running a tire off of what they run down south in the cup car and their dirt and clay is different than us we run on dirt they run on clay so we need mm -hmm. a softer tire than what they run and i wish they let us do a little more to them as well but they don't let us do that either Oh, they didn't let you do any siphoning or like Nothing cutting at all. Really? That's yeah. that's really interesting. I'm surprised they wouldn't have let you guys play around with that kind of stuff. Um, was that just because it was the first year, or are they allowing this stuff for for this year? As of right now, it's still the same as it is, um, but they change the rules as they go. So we'll find out during the season. Right. Right. Um, what? Uh, I'm I'm assuming that place would be a little bit circled on your on your list for tracks to hit up. Um, which would what, what track is considered your home race? Which track is closest to you? Closest to me would be Mirabelle. And the closest Icar, Icar. and uh, that's that's your home race. That's a fun track. That was a great race this year. Um, Actually, that's not one I care for. To be honest with you, it's not uh, it's not as entertaining. To be honest. What yeah. in in what way? It's too flat. I mean, you, the traction level is a different story. Uh, I don't know. I just, just never mm -hmm. road course. I, I really it was like our Sebring. <laughs> yeah, Sebring's different though because it's. Oh well, yeah, but I always compare I it know. to that because I, mm. you know, uh, that's another car uh, track too that was kind of debated in, you know, <laughs> what what tracks would we like to see change up on the season for 2023 but they stuck through it with uh, what they knew that worked in the last season so I, i'm sure there's a um, there's some chance yeah there's lots of chances for for you out there and there's we can't wait to watch you uh back at the, well for me when i get back to ctmp that'll be the first race i'll be able to get back to and, and wallace over here to see you at sunset again um yeah yeah i can't wait it's good to see boys are going to the races this year. We probably ain't doing more than that, or just those two. Oh, I'm trying to get every Ontario race that, that I can get into uh, the out yeah. west, the out east races, and uh, hoping you know, the three, uh, three rivers, uh, Trav River is uh, one of our goals, uh, one of our uh, uh, road Bucket trip list. goals for this summer. So we're hoping, we're hoping that comes through because that that's one. That has got to be the the one out of the whole out of all the tracks on that one, probably potentially. That's a, yeah, that's, that's actually favorite. probably maybe Quebec's biggest one this year. Yeah, yeah. Said, yeah. Out oh, of all the Quebec oh. races, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's probably the best ones. Yeah. yeah. So I'll be I'm uh, I'll be going to Sunset because I only live about um, forty minutes away from that's the your track, home track, which is yeah. Yeah, it's, that's my home. Delaware is my home track, and yeah. Big O actually technically Big O is. But. Yeah. And then CTMP would be my next one. In my so heart. I'll probably I'll do, <laughs> yeah, I'll do Sunset CTMP. I'm gonna hit, get to Oshweekin. And the six of the Toronto is the best one. They got it that weekend with IndyCar though too, and with this past season with all mm -hmm. those extra eyes on it that came on that Friday fan day, and there there was some new eyes on the sport uh, for that Friday. And y'all put. I'm actually happy they brought it back. I mean, the last time I ran was that was 2010 when I ran the Pinties. Or I, don't mm -hmm. I don't remember what year it was, but I actually liked Toronto, and they changed it a little bit on me, so it was a new surprise for me too. So, yeah, yeah, they changed that coming onto the front stretch there, and it, running it, out east too. Um, that, yeah, that's got to that had to have been something different. That was actually cool. I would have had no reason to go to Newfoundland. Until, right. uh, until NASCAR <laughs> went there, so it was actually like, pretty cool they did that. I wish they'd had uh, Riverside back along the way, so you got at least two races out that way, make it worth our while. Right? Yeah, Miss Riverside. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, there's good tracks. The season looks fantastic this year. Uh, finishing up at Delaware, you know, there's 
I don't know a better track to really finish the yeah. season at. It yeah, seems like just so fitting to go there. Oh, it's uh, actually Jukasa went back. That would have yeah, been great. Miss Jukasa, yeah. big time. Yeah. So you, I've never been. I never got to Jukasa when it was around. It was the crown oh, jewel. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was yeah. beautiful. Uh, they right mentioned they it, just souped it up too. Yeah, and I heard they they mentioned it uh, last year on. Um, I don't know if you listen to other podcasts or podcasts in general, but Door Bumper Clear, one of the guys mentioned it. So who knows what will happen with that. It's unfortunate that that such a nice track, because I've seen pictures of it, is is not being raced. That. And who knows what ha- Who knows what could happen? Maybe like somehow it gets a comeback. <laughs> we pitch in for a... Maybe, maybe, maybe Bully's Truck Stop wants to have... Of <laughs> Bully Speedway, I don't know. <laughs> I'd go there. Every actually, we're, actually, we're looking at building our own. Um, we bought a oh. piece of land that has the start of a racetrack on it, so we're just gonna finish it up and see. If we're gonna go dirt or asphalt. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Either dirt. way, either <laughs> way, we're making a trip. If you get that made and have a race, we're making a trip. Yeah. There's no more real good we're ovals going. around us anymore. So, I no more good asphalt. It's ovals, an unfortunate. It's unfortunate. So I grew up, I, our listeners are going to begrudge me because I talk about this a lot, but I grew up going to Barry sure. Speedway, which, which is 40, yeah. I, I, again, 40 minutes the other way uh, for me. My dad worked in the tech shed there and I, and I was a, did line up for a little bit, but. Um, I remember Barry, I raced the guy raced there. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's right. I did. I saw on the stats, you, you, you had a fifth place there actually. Yep. Yeah. In the, bowling, the last time yeah, you raced there, the yeah. Um, Barry was a fantastic track. I mean, I, I, it's gone now, unfortunately. I mean, that's what happens to, to racetracks. We, we lose them. It's not too many that seem to pop up anymore. So, um, when they like, especially when they add stuff like going back to, to Toronto, right? It's oh, good. We didn't, it's another hook in something. Um, how long? How big the track is? The track you're thinking of making? Uh, we're not sure yet. It's all up in the air. We just purchased it this this summer, so we're gonna work on it and put our plan together and go from there. Yeah. Lot- okay. Well, we're we're obviously aware. We can hear the crickets. It sounds heavenly where you are. <laughs> um, we really appreciate you taking time and talking to us. Um, we'd love for you to shout out your sponsors and, and, and whoever you, you want. On social? And where can we find you? What social media is and whatnot? Um, you got me on Instagram. I think it's Dexter Stacy 92. Um, you can follow me on Facebook under Dexter Stacy. You can follow me on Twitter, Dexter Stacy. Um, I'm, I'm almost on all the platforms. I'm just slowly getting into TikTok now. So, oh, <laughs> slowly yeah. getting. Maybe into we got to get on that. <laughs> we we're, we're, we have a page. We're slowly getting into the same way. It's like somebody comes. Oh, did you know you could do this and this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I've been told it's it's way easier and there's way more tools to use when making content and stuff. I just. I'm a Neanderthal when it comes to technology, so I learned Instagram, and it takes a lot for me to learn something new. So I'm, a, <laughs> I'm struggling to make, jump over, but I'm slowly learning. Um, sponsors. Any sponsors you want to thank? Yeah, I got to thank Bully's Truck Stop, like always. Of course, family owned and mm-hmm. been there from day one. And I got to thank our new company, K Fiber Optic. That's awesome. Well, uh, James, anything to add? I, you know, I'm gonna be listening out to you on the uh, the scanner there when you're racing and on the NASCAR app. So, be uh, looking forward to following you guys and and uh, maybe throwing some updates out there on our social media uh, at the WWOMS and and yeah, it would be fun to follow you in the next couple of weeks. No problem. Man. Any questions while I'm there, just, just send me a message. I'll answer you guys anytime. Hey, thanks, man. That's that's awesome yeah we'll definitely catch up with you at the track uh for the first race in may at sunset speedway uh thank you so much for your time dexter it's been fantastic to speak with you good luck in daytona and uh we will definitely be following that and post and uh keeping coverage of how you're doing down there awesome thank you guys for having me on the podcast 
Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> you too, guys. Thanks. Bye. And thank you for Dexter for coming on to the show. Yeah, Wall- taking time yeah. out of your vacation, eh? Yeah, that too. Wallace, nice some takeaways to from that one. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great to watch Dexter at Daytona this year for the beef. It's what's for dinner, 300. Um, he feels that he's got a strong car, and, and I can't wait to watch him there. Uh, him confirming that with us, I, I think he did somewhere else, but with us that him and his dad are going to run the full season again, 2023, all the races in the Pinty Series. But how about the track, year. though? That's super cool. Yeah, Dexter yeah. He says that he they they bought some land with a kind of a track on it, and they they want to build something. Um, he, they weren't sure dirt asphalt oval, but they're kind of leaning asphalt oval because there's none around there, something like that. Yeah, and and that'll be a track that we would have to make. That's for sure. That'd be that'd be really cool if uh, well, yeah one day. That, that comes out to fruition and hey you know and, and as well for this season coming up uh, in a couple of months this for it still though still good to get some drivers on the show and looking forward to getting some more on the show in the next couple of months and yeah. no, he's um he'll be running the number 66 yeah. police truck stop car at Daytona so look out for and that the one new sponsorship MBM Motorsports and yeah and then the other one is K Fiber Optic or opt something like that for internet. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, that's great. That's Thanks Dexter. It was a fun conversation. It was a great chat. Yeah, that's a good time things. and uh, look forward to catching up with him when he's at Daytona. And let's go to our traditional episode here we got a little we got a half about half an hour under half an hour left here you're listening to us halfway on the fm dial on local fm cfmh 107.3 radio waterloo ckms 102.7 the performance motorsports network app and you could also be listening to us on all major streaming platforms and we uh we usually like to kick off our episodes with some uh, the number of the episode that correlates with a race car driver in real life of some sort of series. With these lower numbers, is nice because we can we can expand a little bit. And for this one, we're season six, episode four. We got that yeah. uh, coming. We're recording for the. Week of January 29th, 2023. Another motorsports season upon us. Always a good season. And our, for Another our favorite... Week. Yeah, busy week. For our favorite uh, driver, though, for our favorite picks for number four. It doesn't have to be a favorite driver, but for our picks for number four. Eggman said he was going last, so who's going first? Between me and Wallace. You decide. Okay, I'll go for it. Because in the relation to his it being his last, for sure, full-time season, I think it would be good to mention Kevin Harvick. Even though, obviously, we know he's synonymous with the number 29 for all those years, but in, in in recent years, I mean, he's he's been in the four for quite a bit as well. So, and yeah, and especially hard. with the S, with his SHR connection being kind of one of the OGs there now. Yeah, it's uh, I kind of feel that when I think of Kevin, I think of the four more so than the twenty nine. I don't know why. Uh, it, it's interesting yeah. to watch drivers go through different cars because it almost seems like they have two different careers. So that's why I'm really interested to see Kyle's Jesus, look um, at this. Look at this career this year. Stats. But just look at that. It's like chicklets. I mean, he's got <laughs> like 36 wins in the four. 
or something like that. Yeah, just so. scattered them around almost kind of every track. Um, you name it from nickname the closer from from your from your Dovers to your Bristols to your Darlingtons to your Phoenixes to your Vegases to your Richmond Atlantas. Michigan, um, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, yeah, New Hampshire. Oh, we got. Uh, how could we forget to mention we got Charlie Hamilton hanging out with us here in the quote unquote virtual WAM studio on our virtual audience, quote unquote, um, and road course too. How about how, how about Harvick on the you know showing that he can do road courses, and he's always someone you can put in your fantasy pool for the. Daytona 500. So all around robust, good driver. And we've seen, you know, coming, we've seen him, like I was just saying here, look, look at all these stats that I'm for, uh, for, uh, we should do a visual version of the show, but for all the stats though, over his career, it's just absolutely crazy. And in the 29 too, it's just RCR. Um, He's got a stellar career. So, I mean, obvious hall of famer first ballot and his involvement now with the cars tour taking things kind of into uh uh you know thinking about the future what can he what can he do to to leave for sure leave a mark and uh, yeah that's that's real cool so and uh, looking forward to seeing the season for 2023 is, is uh right off in the sunset mm-hmm well, who do you got picked? Um, I went with a driver who some people will have heard of, probably not a lot of you. Uh, keeping the theme of sports cars and Corvette, I went with uh, Oliver Gavin. Oliver Gavin is from Britain. He's retired from driving now. He raced for Corvette Racing for a good chunk of his career, and he was quite... He had some other um, other driving jobs before that. Uh, he was the F1 safety car driver from 97 to 99. Uh, but he did all his best work behind the wheel of a Corvette. He had five class wins at Le Mans, five 12-hour Sebring wins, and five Petit Le Mans wins. He's won a championship in IMSA in the ALMS and in WeatherTech, or I think it was Tudor at the time, uh, but WeatherTech series, you know, he, it's hard when you talk about Corvette racing to not talk about Oliver Gavin. He has been one of those gentlemen, he's not a gentleman driver, he's a pro, but just one of those gentleman drivers, uh, very fast, very understanding of what it takes to make a car last for a long time. A great team player. Um, you know, if there was a Hall of Fame for for drivers like that, yeah, I mean, he he he'd be in it, right? So, um, you know, he he drove with Ron Fellows as well, and he's driven with some other big names. So. Yeah, today I had to go with uh, number four, Oliver Cabin. Good pick. And Eggman, what do you got? Do you remember a time when any given Sunday you could go to a Cup Series race and see those attractive Red Bull racing stock cars? I went with one of their drivers, someone that only drove there for one year, plus five races. I like uh, that one. <laughs> one one Casey Kane. Um, yeah, he, nice. he right when Everham sold his team to Richard Petty Motorsports, uh, Casey Kane announced he was leaving Richard Petty Motorsports for uh, Hendrick Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah, I the like pro- that the prob- the problem with that is he left RPM in 2010. But his contract with Hendrick did not start until 2012. So where did he go for a year? That's he was yeah, signed. That's right. He yeah, was signed for a for a one year contract with uh, Team Red Bull in NASCAR. Uh, when Richard Petty Motorsports dropped him about a month before the end of the season in yeah. 2010, 
he uh, finished the finished the last five races of the season in the 83 car for Red Bull until his full time seat in the four took effect the next year. He actually did pretty well in a car that is that was historically not top tier. Yeah, uh, yeah. Totaled seven top tens, uh, seven top fives, and one victory. Uh, coming at Phoenix International Raceway, in which he only led the last 14 laps of the race. Uh, sources wow. say, sources say, meaning Wikipedia, that the reason <laughs> he went with the four when he went to Red Bull is it's the number that was on his sprint car when he were a lad. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, that is my pick, Casey Kane, for Red Bull Racing. And speaking of Red Bull Racing, big news out of Formula One this week, eh? Oh. Yes, <laughs> <F-A>. the blue <laughs> oval, the blue oval. <laughs> so, uh, Red Bull, Red Bull team principal uh, Christian Por- Christian Horner, and Ford Motor Company president Mike Farley announced at the Red Bull Racing uh, 2023 car launch this week that Ford will be returning to the Formula One world after almost 20 years away. Um, so they they last raced in 2004. Uh, use it when their uh, Codworth, Cosworth Motors powered the Jaguar Formula One team, who it, it ironically was sold to Red Bull and became Red Bull Racing. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, they they announced that they will be engaging in a technical partnership with Red Bull powertrains to develop and produce the new 2026 regulation engines for both Red Bull Racing and Alpha Tauri, of course. Um, what this means in the grand scheme of things is the FIA may be loosening their stranglehold on Formula One and letting in some new, some new meat, some fresh pockets. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know they, they announced or set out today that they're, um, they're allowing or, or it's open to uh, for new manufacturers to come into Formula One. Um, I think that was why there was so much hesitation on on Andretti. I think they wanted him to come with a manufacturer, and he teamed with with um, with Cadillac, of course. So, yeah, I mean that's great. Ford coming back. Um, it's really funny all of a sudden to just see these big. North American manufacturers ready to step up and and go play in that Formula One sandbox. I agree. And what this means for me is regardless of how the Andretti Cadillac proposal turns out, I think now that public statements have been made that the FIA is open to more manufacturers, uh, Andretti Cadillac will probably get in. I would hope I, I hope so. But I mean, I would imagine but regardless of how that turns out, there will be an American nameplate on the F1 grid in 2026. A couple of years that's away. Awesome. Yeah, that's not bad. Well, if you think about it, 2026 seems like a long time away, but to build a partnership and develop and test and produce. Yeah, there, there's some in, time. Uh, 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 in mass, some power, tr- some power units not very much time at all so i hope it all works out for them uh red bull has been talking about taking the engine program in-house for years and now with partnership from ford they're finally gonna be able to do it so yeah Um, they tried to they took it from kind of took it from honda and it's red bull powertrains but it's still it's still honda affiliate but i'm kind of surprised honda doesn't want to be involved in formula one but I'm, it's going to be interesting to see what what they do for their engines, how they're going to be involved. Um, I I wonder again. I I bring this up a lot. I'm curious. Ford's going to release the pictures or release or put out the new Ford Mustang GT3 car that's going to hit the track in 2024. They're showing that at Sebring, 12 hour in March, uh, much like they did with the Corvette at at Daytona. Um, Could that be the test bed for the engine? I mean, mean, I'm not too sure. Um, It's just interesting that all of these 
manufacturers are are really stretching out their fingers into different racing. Yeah, uh, what I think it comes down to is uh, it's a saying that's been around forever, but what wins on Sunday sells on Monday. Yeah. So if you see the Blue Oval win the Monaco Grand Prix, for example, one of the marquee races over in the entire world. Yeah. Part of the big you're, three. You're going to, yeah, you're going to probably be, even if it's subconsciously, more inclined to lean towards maybe a Ford if you're looking to buy a car. So it's just like what Ford did in the 60s with the whole Lama thing is. Hey, we beat Ferrari. Now come buy our cars. Yeah, yeah, and there's and and there's profit uh, to be made here too. Oh, absolutely. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, some big news for Formula One. We're not far away from preseason testing. Uh, we are thirty days exactly today from it's coming lo- from coming up. Yeah, lights out at Bahrain. Thirty well, days. Guess what's Welcome coming this Bahrain, weekend, well. boys. The Clash. Yes, the we're looking clash. at the second Clash. And what a big event that this is for NASCAR. We saw last year a lot come out of it. And this year, yeah, a lot of promotional stuff as well for the sport. Even tonight, Michael Wallace. Or sorry, not Michael. Michael Waltrip. That's that's weird. Michael Waltrip and Ross Chastain got into a little uh, kerfuffle with could have been Michael Wallace uh, with the Judgment Day from WWE. Right. They came in. Rey Mysterio and his son had a race versus each other at the Coliseum in some old freaking Chevy Chevy SSs, and nice. somehow somehow. Ross Chastain is involved in in wrestling, in a wrestling <laughs> faction. So that's Maybe real he likes cool. It. Well, they all, all they, Mikey, they all do. Mikey, a former twenty four seven champion, yeah, he he's a fam- he's familiar with the wrestling world. But they all that was great going. That was on SmackDown. That was that was fun to see. So this pro- promotion from all over coming into this especially in LA think of how that works as well it's a little different works a little different there these people got to make appearances and whatnot we're seeing people all over uh going on talk shows even somehow Gordon was on was on Kimmel or Fallon or he was on Fallon recently but yeah there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of stuff leading up into this season and yeah, new new faces from last year going over to this year. We'll, we're going to see what happens. The big thing that was from last year was the students from the uh, university. And the university was like, yeah, it's the uni- yeah uh, USC. And a lot of the fans, uh, set, well, it was almost up to 70% of the fans generally, not just students but other people as well, were a part of the audience last year. So interesting, interesting to see what comes out of that if those people come back this year but nonetheless we're, we're gonna see uh, a good event aside from what the crowd the crowd sake of things and nascar going into southern california again and, and seeing what is going to potentially come out of what could be a points race in the upcoming years for for the uh the arena because there's there's a chance that if there isn't enough time for the renovate or whatever they're doing the revamping at Auto Club if that's not going to be done in time by 2024 I believe then they're going to have to potentially consider making the Coliseum race a a points race which is a pretty big I think that's a pretty big deal uh, and, and it's from a financial point of things. It's also from their, their obviously their invested presence in that market. So we're going to see a, another, t- uh, another obviously taste of that this weekend. And I'm real excited to see 
or well, what we're going to see overall in the season potentially, we're going to see Gibbs versus Gregson, I think, and I, th- I hope we're going to see a little taste of that this weekend because that's I'm hoping to see with their personalities and their driving styles and their talent and with 2023 with them battling for rookie of the year is going to hold what we're, we're what are we going to see potentially af- at the clash af- are they going to clash af- i'm afraid i know the answer already what but what i mean there's a bit of an equipment disparity there isn't there <laughs> okay sure good point i mean I'll take that. That's a good point. Is there? Is it may be, there? It I mean, be. that's the whole point of the cars is so there isn't an equipment disparity. Yeah, right. And, and that's. But, and, and yeah. I mean, yeah, that. that's that's the idea. But the playing field, regardless, is never going to be level. They can make it closer, but it is never going to be level. Um, and when Joe Gibbs Racing has so much more money to dump into it, then I mean, I hope uh, Legacy Motor Club does well. And I hope with Jimmy in there as another source of money helps them perform better. But Ty Gibbs is still in Grandpa's car, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. The class will be interesting, too, this year because we, we're not limited on parts like we were last year. We're not worried about breaking the car as, as much. So, um and the, and the drivers know what to expect. They've been here before, so yeah, this is going to be. I mean, I hope they never make this a points race. That's uh, it. Kind of defeats know. the purpose for me. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the race. I like. I don't know because I like the race and I like the track. I th- I think it's cool for what it is. I just think it's not a proper. It's not a proper racetrack. I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. I, I just disagree don't in the sense it. of no, I, that. I, I understand, but in the sense of, I'll agree on the sense of the logistical side of not being a proper racetrack because there's no way that place has anything, any mind when they were. I don't know. Maybe when they were making it, someone maybe said racetrack. Maybe I don't, I don't know about. I don't. I don't think so. No. But, I mean, the pit road situation <laughs> alone makes it. So logistically, yeah. a points race being held there doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, and I mean, I would, the the thing about that would be too is okay. So we'll just make it a non traditional. So we're gonna have two, you know, we're gonna do what we would do in in the race. So there's like we're gonna do in the clash. So there's no there's no need for a hot pit stop, right? There's just yeah, heat racing like they did at but, the Bristol when they put it to dirt. Like and I will time. add yeah. that this is off of again, and as we usually like to say, you know, these are our quote unquote dirt sheets. These are things that haven't necessarily been confirmed by NASCAR, right, or right. any any sort of official, but we do see it from verified sources, quote unquote verified, and and actually verified sources on the internet and and through what we're we're seeing uh, also on. Uh, like even I saw it on the LA Times there, so this is this is out. So you know, uh, I do think that is good for the sport, um, regardless of what happens out of that, because there are going to be new faces. I think again this weekend. It just needs to be a good show. It. Oh, all. it'll be a good show. It right? Like it doesn't. There need. There, we don't need to be worried about anything else. And I don't here's. Think. And here's something we can all maybe, as we wrap up the show here, something uh, we can talk about to end off here is the clash. And and this is just going off of one race. And this could be a thing, though. We never know, you know, that things could happen where trends, we could see trends start before our own eyes. There could be a chance where the clash could be a good championship predictor. The winner of the clash wins the, the championship. The is yeah. that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, I was thinking about this this week, too. So there's going to be a little bit of talk on that as well. I'm sure going into, you're going to hear a lot of that on the broadcast this weekend, you know, throughout the day. One Um, season does not a trend make. Yeah. I guess we'll see because if it happens this year, two is a trend. And it's interesting because we're on the one end of the season and and it's, and it's already that time of the year again, where we're on that one end of the season and I can't believe it. So it's yeah, so it's interesting to think 
who, you know, with Joey Logano winning last year in the championship. And then nine months later, he goes on and wins, uh, or he wins the clash nine months before and, um, totally different kind of track than what you, what you'd see on the whole schedule too. So, and, and, and it's also a good way to kick off the year, regardless for whoever you are. It's good to, I think that this race is now a good chance for that to, it's a little bit of an extra boost than what the other clash was like, I think, especially in the fame side of things. And it gives the sport more attention to when they actually do start in a couple of weeks when the, the Daytona 500, when we're actually officially an actual speed week, speed week, ridiculous. Should be an S on the end of that. <laughs> but uh, that's right. my opinion. That's my old, that's my, that's my old race fan guy coming in. We don't even need, we don't even need uh, a, a, a week anymore. Apparently. I mean, they're just going to send them out to qualify. I, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that myself because actually Denny Hamlin said it on one of the shows he was on. He was like, for 2311, they're putting Travis Pastrana, a guy who hasn't driven a car, a stock car in years, just throwing him to the wolves in Daytona 500 qualifying. And if he doesn't make it, he doesn't make the race. That's kind of ridiculous to me. But actually, it's detrimental. Yeah, I, I'm, but I don't get paid millions of dollars to make the, millions of dollars to make yeah, these to decisions. Yeah, to make these choices. So. Yeah, what do I know? <laughs> well, and there's so much more stuff we're going to be able to get to next week, especially with the NASCAR preseason among us, and as we usually, as we got early in the episode, a little bit of taste from the Xfinity side of it, but and and as well as the other series as a truck and the Cup series, we can cover of the, all of that as NASCAR heads into its preseason, the new rides, new tracks, new rules, and some of the caveats for the 2023 season that some of the drivers will have to come among. So, hey, you know what? We, we're going to have that all covered here on the Wide World of Motorsports podcast. We, we're, going, we're on a roll. We're, we're going almost week after week here, coming at you giving you the news from the track to the community on CFMH 107.3 local FM in St. John, New Brunswick. As I said last week, I was going to have some donairs after the episode. They were delicious and they were actually prepared. The the items from it were from New Brunswick. So they were legitimate. And then uh, we're over in Ontario on CKMS 102.7 Radio Waterloo in Kitchener Waterloo. And on the Performance Motorsports Network app on your smart device, you can check us out on all major streaming services, as well as our website, www.thewideworldofmotorsportspodcast.wordpress.com, and our social medias at the WWOMS. Well, fellas, it just looks like we're going to wrap it up for this edition. I am James Jordan. Mike Wallace. And the Eggman. We'll see y'all around the bend. Adios. Bye-bye.